Kingsmill, Electrotech uh, differs from fossil fuel-based technologies in that it is on a long learning curve. Can you explain learning curves? Sure. So a learning curve is where the cost of the product falls for every doubling in deployment. And it's a, it's a number you can calculate very accurately. So, um, and it goes all the way back to the um, airline industry uh, in, in the US in the 1950s, where they discovered that the more planes they built, the cheaper they got for every new one. And so in, in, in this instance, the more solar panels we produce, the cheaper they get. And actually the numbers, again, slightly depends how you calculate a bit. It's about 20% fall in cost for every doubling of deployment of these technologies. And that's the key, the key number to, to, to base your framing around. Yeah, I, the uh, it used to be called Wright's Law because Jim Wright, an aerospace or uh, an airplane engineer, came up with this. Yep. And since then, it's been sort of, a lot of research been done and calculated for various industries. So this is, as you say, this is a, an established method for uh, calculating the uh, long run decline in costs for new technologies. Yeah, and, and and it tends to apply to technologies which are small and modular, and 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 the reason why is because if if it's if it's small and modular, tens of thousands of entrepreneurs can um, iterate away to try and solve it, and and that's the big difference between these technologies and, for example, a nuclear power station, where there's a very small number of people, every single one is different, and it's very hard to have learning curves, and, and um, so. Learning curves actually apply right across the economy. Um, but what's particularly powerful, and, and they even apply, for example, in the oil and gas sector. But the difference is that in the oil and gas sector, you've also got decline rates. Um, and therefore, the more the more you extract your technology, it does get better over time. But you're, you're going deeper and deeper into the earth to get it. And therefore, you're, um, it, 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 in extraction technologies, you're not actually getting learning curves fitting through into prices. Yes, um, I want to ask you a question. I'd get your opinion on this. Um, fa costs can only f fall so far, uh, and then they hit a floor. So, for example, solar panels out of China are nine cents a watt. You know, can they go to zero? Probably not. Uh, but it seems that that when they There's a long way between nine and zero, though, Markham. Fair enough, but because uh, people ask the same question at two, they're like, "It's two dollars. It can't go to zero. No, it can't. But it can go to nine cents." Sorry. But the question I want to ask is when it gets that low, then it seems like the the focus shifts to improving performance. So you may, you know, right now, uh, a solar panel's efficiency may be 22, 23%. You add some perovskite. Now, all of a sudden, it's at 35%. You've got a better performing solar panel at the same low price. Yeah, so there are lots of ways that you can improve and iterate and improve these technologies. So as you say, what, what one way that uh, is to improve the, um, the the efficiency of the solar panel, but you know another way was simply, for example, to improve the way that the solar panel was made, so it was much less energy intensive, to reduce the thickness um, of the of the um, of, of the, uh, the the panels, to um, improve and, and standardize the way they get put on roofs, and and I think there's that's the point. There are when you're making when the industry is big enough people and entrepreneurs can get involved in lots of different aspects of the technology because it's worth it and it's big enough can you give us some examples um solar panels wind turbines batteries evs and so on uh how much they've dropped over the years so if we, i mean we take we take data going back to 1980 because again as a Dwayne farmer at oxford shows that if the longer you take you, you do get these kind of bounces. The longer you take, the more clear the story becomes. Um, so if you go back to 1980, the the price of a solar panels dropped 99.6%. Um, the price of a battery has dropped by 99%. Um, the price of a wind turbine, or wind installation costs dropped by about 80%. So these are very spectacular cost falls. What are we likely to see in some of the demand side technologies like heat pumps and EVs? Uh, how low might they go? So, so 
well, as I say, we, we, we don't know where the end point is, but to give you a sense of the opportunity set, take the battery. Um, the, the, the battery, people are innovating in every single major university in the world across dozens of parameters using um, dozens of different, or oh, sorry, thousands of different materials and, and dozens of um, d d uh, d in different ways. So the point is your, your, your opportunity suite is vast and therefore your capacity to reduce costs um, is also spectacular. So, I mean, the number that I think Dan would have quoted is that the, the kind of the bill of materials for a, a um, uh, an, uh, an, an LFP battery is around $50, a bill of materials for um, the some of the newer batteries comes down to 25, but the bill of materials for a sodium based battery is about $1. Um, and, and, and again, there's clearly different ways of, of, of doing this. And I'm always a little bit suspicious actually about the bill of materials approach, but nevertheless, the point simply is that, um, that there are there are huge opportunities to um, extract uh, efficiency and, and, and do this stuff more effectively. So I think, again, we it's somewhat unhelpful in 2025 to worry too much about, you know, wh where exactly this process stops. I think you just can make a fairly s reasonable simplifying assumption that for the next decade, there are enough new technologies in these different um uh, uh, d in these different areas to mean that we can roughly get a sense of where we're heading. So we're heading for about $25 per megawatt hour solar. We're heading for about $50 per kilowatt hour batteries. And this is all average, by the way, because we're already getting those two numbers in, in leading locations right now, today in 2025. Um, but, but, you know, we, we, we can say that given the innovations we know we've got, and given that the there is still a... Uh, 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 still ideas coming down the pipe and there's still an awful lot of catching up to do. You know, that's the kind of level we can think about. And the point, Simney, that we're making at, at Ember is to say, look, at these low, already getting disruption today um, at, 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 you know, on average uh, $40 solar and, and $100 batteries. And and if, you, if that's going to halve again, then the, the, the disruption will be very considerably higher because, of course, you're already cutting into the fat of the current um, fossil system. Last question, uh, Kingsmill, and that uh, it, it involves your observation of you know all of the universities around the world that are working on batteries, for example. But over the last twenty years, there have been the rise of innovation ecosystems, and it used to be that the Americans led that, and they still are very powerful in that area. But China, in particular, around electrotech is doing an amazing amount of R&D. They have 75% of the clean energy patents and, you know, like BYD has 11 or 12,000 R&D engineers on staff. Yep. And yep. that suggests that the innovation will go on for a long time because they're putting the capital into it. it yeah, it does. And, and I think what it also means, I, I often get the argument from people that, you know, the Chinese are dominating these technologies and therefore um, we should, double down on fossil tech and, you know, let them get on with it. And this is a very self-defeating argument because it's basically saying, you know, let's double down in horses in the era of the car or let's double down on gaslighting in the era of electricity. I mean, it's just never going to work, folks. Um, so the, the what it says to me is that two things. First of all, we need to up our game and in the West and to be uh, uh, allocating very considerably larger amounts of um, investment and uh capital and genius into the um exploitation of these opportunities and discovering them um but it but it also and i think there's also tremendous grounds for hope because d don't forget we're actually fairly early in the journey so we you know we're at the peak great but you know if this is horses in 19 if this is cars in 1920 you know the, there's a huge amount of growth yet to come and actually there's huge new industries to be built and lots of different areas where actually other countries apart from China have an edge. And, you know, the, the classic example, for example, is is, uh, is software, where, of course, the US has an edge um, in many aspects of software. And, um, and and you know, then you have companies like Octopus or, or Schneider Electric, uh, which are coming in with lots of very brilliant ways to combine supply and demand of electrons. So, look, there's, we're, we're fairly early in the game. Everything's to play for, and uh, we need to take part much more aggressively.